Hello everybody. Today's project is going to be another one of these famous projects that I do when I'm on demonstration tours. Uh, when you're doing a demonstration or at a show, you have usually three or four things that you do pretty much all the time. Now the fact is these the demonstration items are very easy to do. They take 15 to 20 minutes, but the great thing about it is if you're starting to do your blacksmith work, you're starting to set up at a festival or something like that, these are neat little items that will hold an audience for 15 minutes. And remember, not many folks are going to stay much longer than that. And then you can make this wonderful item and sell it for 20 bucks. And tonight's item is going to be the incredible spoon. Now, the fact is you can actually make a complete set of these items, a fork, knife, and a spoon, and sell the set for 50 bucks very easily. So this is another little handy thing to have. If you're a reenactor in the Civil War, or maybe even into the medieval reenactments, the metal silverware is very authentic, very rustic looking, so it will be something that you want to have. Now, the only thing with this project is that you're going to use a new technique that you have not run across yet. I know I've mentioned it a couple times, but it's called dishing. And this is where we're going to get into a new tool. It's a very simple tool. In fact, it's called a stump. You're going to find that when you start working with sheet metal and looking for dishes and hollow forms, that a perfectly good wooden stump is going to be a fantastic addition to your toolbox. So we're going to start with some 3 8 inch bar stock. And go ahead and start with a long piece. Now, we'll actually cut it to size a little bit later. But what we're going to do is actually neck down about an inch from the edge of this piece of bar stock. Now, remember when we were making our uh, tongs? We actually laid that metal over the edge of the anvil and came down and made two different sides. We're going to do the same thing with this spoon because what we've got to do is we've got to isolate a piece of metal on the end of this bar. That piece that we isolate is going to become the bowl of the spoon. But, like I said, I'm going to show you all of that right now. So the fire's going hot. We've got a piece of stock in it. So let me bring it out and let's go to work. All right, hot piece of metal coming through. Now what you want to do is you want to start by making sure this end's kind of clean. Now if you've cut this with a hardy, tap it a couple of good times. Get yourself a nice clean end. Now when you've done that, set this thing about an inch over the edge of the anvil. Make a couple of good strikes and turn it up on its edge, just like this. Now instead of rotating it on around, go back to the first edge. You are only working two sides. Now be careful, you don't want to pinch this thing off. But what you do want to do is make that nice little separation there. So that what you have is a separation between the shaft here and also the end of our piece of metal. Now that's our first heat. We're going to go back, take another heat, and we're going to continue to clean this guy up because this area right here is going to be the handle or the shank of our spoon. So let's get back to the fire. Now for our second heat, what we want to do is continue to draw this guy out. Now remember, don't get that too terribly thin, but you do want to draw this shank out because that will in fact be the handle of your spoon. Now, I've kept this thing in the square so I can draw it out, but that's looking pretty good. We have this piece of metal that's isolated up here, which will be the bowl. That's good. And this handle, now that we've got a taper, we can pretty much make it just as long as we want. I mean, it can be this long or it can be that long. You can flatten this out, do whatever you want with it. For this particular demonstration, usually what I do at my show is I'm actually going to twist, put a little blacksmith twist right here in the end of the handle. That makes it fancy and it gives you a little more time in the demonstration to show the crowd you know, a neat trick about blacksmithing. And to be honest, for most people, seeing a piece of steel twisted like a, a piece of licorice is pretty incredible stuff. So that's usually what I do. Now, for the most part, we're done with this guy. We're done with our handle until the next phase, which is making the bowl of this spoon. And that comes to where we need to heat this area we're going to set it on top of the anvil and come down right on top of the diamond. Not on the flat, mind you, but on the top of the diamond. 
And then as we work this piece of metal, we're just going to crush the snot out of it. Now this is where you're going to need a little bit of skill in working your Play-Doh because the way that you tilt your hammer as you're working this piece of metal is really going to tell you how it spreads out. Now your first couple of times, you're going to get kind of a boxy type spoon bowl. That's okay. But just remember, if you need a little extra going out to one side, Tilting that hammer to the side to squeeze it just a little bit more than the rest of it is a great way to do that. So let's take another heat and let's start working on the bowl of that spoon. There's our heat and let's start flattening it. Now don't be afraid to hit this one. Now you see those little square edges there? There's nothing saying that you can't tilt this up and work a little bit of camphor in there. Now as you can see, the bowl is starting to form pretty readily. Now I'm going to take another heat. I'm going to do just a little bit more, but you can see how easily that came out. And we have a nice round shape. Now once again, Normally, if you just were coming straight down on top of this, you would not have such a rounded shape. So you've got to tilt that hammer to the left and to the right as you're working those edges to go ahead and push a little more of that metal out there. So let's take another heat, let's true it up, and then I'm going to show you how to make your dish. Now do be careful when you get down to thin metal. Remember, it heats a lot faster. and you can very quickly melt that piece. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm taking the sharp edges off that square just around the neck so that you get something that looks like this. Now, it's looking a lot more like a spoon, however it still looks like it got hit by a Mack truck. So now we've got to put the dish down in this guy. And the way we're going to do that, it's pretty neat. Now you're going to need a ball peen hammer and a stump. And the end grain, you, you can even do this with a piece of a couple of two by fours nailed together, but you've got to have a piece of wood that's on the end grain. In fact, you can even use your anvil stump. So let me take another heat or let me grab a ball peen hammer and let me show you some of the details before we actually go to work. Here's your ball peen hammer. You're going to actually be using the ball of the hammer. And here's your stump. Now, this can be pine, it can be anything that you want it to be, because basically you're going to be burning a little hole into this guy. Now, the fact is, about the third of the fourth spoon that you have is going to be your best spoon, because you're actually going to be burning the hollow or the shape for your spoon. Now, it's not a problem starting off. Basically, what's going to happen is you're going to take your piece like this while it's hot, and you're going to lay the bowl, or what will be the bowl, on the edge of the stump just like this. You just want the bowl to be over the stump and then you're going to take this ball peen and come down into the top. Now because this piece is hot it's going to be flaming it's going to be smoking so be careful but once that happens you'll start to see that bowl start to curl up. You want to start working it in the middle and then slowly as that middle dish is out tilt it up to the sides and work the sides around. You'll see that bowl start to form. Now remember, you're not making a, a, a kitchen ladle, so it does not have to be super deep. Get a kitchen spoon to try to give you some idea of reference. Remember, it doesn't have to be pretty. All you have to be able to do with it is eat soup. So, try it out. Now I'm going to take another heat, and we'll show you how to do this. Let's go to it. All right, here we go. Sitting right on the edge, you can see it start to smoke. Keep hammering away. Notice how I'm turning it in the stump. See that little depression it's making? I won't get too far out of line. So I'm going to move it back up. But look at there. There is the bowl of your spoon. Now once again, don't worry. Now see that, that surface right there is a little uneven. Don't sweat it because you can come back in with files or sanders to even that up. Even do a little something like that makes a very nice deal. Now the only trick here is 
And once again, I want you to understand that this does not have to be perfect. This is a functional item. And people will be mighty impressed that you were just able to do the bowl of this spoon. Now, we've got a couple other things we need to handle before we're through with this. We need to see to our handle right here. We're going to put a twist in it and cut it off. So let me get some more heat. And now we need to move to the vise and uh, do a quick twist. So let's go to work. Now, just like all the other twists that you've done, this is pretty simple. Now, you use your bending bar. You can actually use an adjustable wrench. It doesn't matter. All you want to do is set this bad boy in the vise, have it chucked up. You can do the fancy reverse twist, just whatever you like. We're just going to do something simple. And like I said, simple is good, especially if you're doing a demonstration. And now, let me say this. Jay Riekert used to tell me, never do anything in public that you have not perfected in private said that Murphy lusts after such events, and he was right. Now, when I give you all these projects to do in a show, don't ever, ever, ever do them in front of a crowd unless you have practiced them. Not only is it embarrassing, it's also very unprofessional. And if you're going to be doing stuff on my watch, do it the right way. Now, we have a beautiful little twist on this spoon. All we need to do is use a cutting hardy, cut it off, and we've got a nice spoon. Now, the great thing about this guy is that it can be done completely in a demonstration environment. You don't need any power tools to do this. This is a great thing, but once again, for your demonstration. Now, obviously, you need to cut it off, and you know how to use your cutting hardy. Now, there's one other thing I'm going to show you this evening. Now, regardless, if you ever go to a show or you ever even talk about being a blacksmith, the thing that's going to get on your nerves the most is every time somebody hears the word blacksmith or they see an anvil, they're going to go, oh, you must be shoeing a horse. How many times have I endured this? Now, don't be mad with these people. The fact of the matter is that's just the perception of a blacksmith. That's our job to educate them. But, However, there are a few things that the farriers use that you can use here as well. And one of the things is getting rid of that nasty burr that's left after you use a cutting hardy. So I'm going to drop a cutting hardy in the anvil, and then I'm going to show you how to use a hoof rasp to actually smooth down the metal on the end of the spoon, and then we'll be through. Let me take another heat, find a rasp, and get everything set for cutting. Be right back. Now, just like normal, take your cutting hardy, take your hammer. Now, make sure you rotate your spoon as you cut. Now, this is going to make sure that burr is right in the middle. But I don't want you to cut all the way through it. I want you to cut most of the way through it. Because then you're going to go to your vise, lock it into the vise just like this, and give a sharp twist. Now, it's going to come right off. We're throw that on the ground. And then you're going to use the smooth side of the hoof rasp. And watch this. Now, normally, this rasp is much too coarse to try to file a piece of metal with. But because the metal is still hot, boy, it just saws right through it. It makes a nice, smooth back end. And as they say in the movies, there is nothing better than a nice, smooth back end, right? Okay. All right, so let me grab a pair of tongs. What do I want to use? I want to use this pair. Now, at this point, you can take your wax, you can take your linseed oil, and put your finish on there. Or you can cool it down, hit it with a wire brush, and then coat it however you want to finish it out. The fact is, you can drop this in water because it's mild steel and sell it to a crowd member for $15 or $20. Now, I'll tell you a dirty trick. What you do is, after everyone has watched you make this, you tell them that you're going to offer it up for auction. Start the bidding at $5 and $5 increments and watch it go up. I have sold a spoon before for $50. So, guys, there you go. A quick and easy way to make a quick buck. It's also not too terribly bad looking. If you're a reenactor, any reenactor would be proud to have this in their mess kit. So outside of that, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next week. Take it easy, fellas.